This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena as Jank Week continues, well, the fans on Patreon who get to vote on these things in an overwhelming landslide voted for All Planeswalker Umori. Yep. So Umori the Collector. This is a companion card that makes you choose a type and your starting deck must completely share a type outside of lands. And then as a reward, you get a discount on all spells of that type. So we played Umori all instants. We've played multiple Umori all creatures. But when I put up Umori all planeswalkers in the Patreon poll, it just it's it, the most lopsided victory I think I've ever seen. So here you, here it is. You asked for it, you've got it. So how do we choose what to play with Umori the Collector? Well, one thing I was sure of is I wanted to run Nicole Bolas. The ability to copy the abilities of other Planeswalkers makes it incredibly versatile in a deck full of Planeswalkers. And it's also one of the most powerful Planeswalkers available at this time. Bolas is a bit of a nombo with Umori the Collector because Umori the Collector doesn't discount Bolas, but it discounts all the other Planeswalkers, so that worked for me. So I had four Nicol Bolas. Because of that, I decided, well, I also need to run a ton of black mana and make a workable mana base. This left me with much less green sources and much less white sources, so I had to deprioritize green planeswalkers like Nissa and Vivian, who I may have otherwise played, but mainly those aren't here because of Bolas. Another planeswalker that plays with other planeswalkers very well is Sarkon the Masterless, who can turn them all into a creatures so that your planeswalkers can attack. This is one of the win cons in the deck, with the Bolas ultimate of a minus eight being the other strong win con in the deck. Honestly, we don't lack for win cons. Most of the cards have some kind of effect that can help end the game, but Sarkin making the planeswalkers into creatures and flying through the air as dragons is the primary way that we win games. Once you knock these two out of the way, another way that I wanted to synergize with Umori was to play expensive planeswalkers, because if you play Umori on four, you get a ramp point to play a, five, a six mana planeswalker on five. So we run an above average amount of six mana planeswalkers in this deck with Liliana, Dreadhorde General, Chandra, Awakened Inferno, and Garrett, Curse Huntsman. Because we don't have any spot removal, because every freaking card in our deck is a planeswalker, we wanted to run planeswalkers that can have big board effects when they land to remove either other planeswalkers or creatures. And the minus four for Liliana and the minus three for Chandra are really helpful in this way, while Garrick can make some wolves or blow up a creature. Raska Golgari Queen is one that made it into the deck as a four of. The more I played with this card, the more I wanted it because the minus three killing those early threats was a very important thing. The plus two, I would really only want to sacrifice a used up Narset, a zombie token, or a wolf. And I don't ever sacrifice my lands with this deck because this deck needs all the mana it can get. To Fairy, the Time Raveler was a pretty easy three drop. In fact, we need three drop Planeswalkers because we have no cheaper Planeswalkers to cast. So we needed some Planeswalkers to keep us alive. And the ones I like the best for the job are Narset, who almost always finds more Planeswalkers. To Fairy, because, you know, it's just like the best card. So what can I do? And then there's Kaya, the Orzhov Usurper. Now, you could run a few other cards in this spot, like Tybalt to generate a few blockers, or dove in to gain a life and make a thopter. For me, it was easily Kaya. Kaya's minus one, exiling one drops, is very helpful for fending off the little armies of red creatures and such, but it also hits Witch's Oven, and the plus one hits the Graveyard, which matters a lot against cycling. The minus one also hits the Fox. You know, that frickin' Fox thing out of the cycling deck. So for me, it was four Kayas. The more I played with the card, the more impressed I was and the more I wanted it for my three drop of choice in the deck. So after introducing our cast and crew of super duper friends ready for their Avengers movie, we'll introduce you to this epic mana base. I'm playing 28 lands. I'm doing this more and more with my builds because if you miss a land drop, you die. So I want to be able to keep two and three land hands and still have a chance to win the game if the hand is good. 
So we have four of what is probably the best card in the deck, Interplanar Bacon. I know it's Beacon. Deal with it. And whenever we play a Planeswalker, we gain a life. This is what gives the deck a chance against aggressive strategies. When Planeswalkers start hitting the battlefield, if the opponent is attacking them, then it kind of gives you more time. Every Planeswalker you play gains you more life, gives you more time. So it's, it's a very important card. If you have one, you have a chance against aggro. If you have two, aggro has almost no chance. Kind of amazing. Then we have this little arrangement of Shocklands. The Shocklands are picked out because of their ability to produce mana colors that cast Nickel Bolas, because we still want to play Bolas on turn five. So I'm not going to play a land uh, to the effect of like something that makes green and white, for example, because that doesn't cast Bolas at all. So I still wanted to have my colors represented and occasionally cast some of my green and white cards, but still be able to play Bolas. Two Fabled Passage to go with three of the Grixis lands because I still want to play Bolas. If I had basic planes or basic forest in the deck, fetching them would make it hard to cast Bolas. And then we have this smashing, uh, smattering team of Triomes who are also helping the mana in a big way. In a perfect game, your first turn is a Triome, your second turn is a Triome, and then the rest of your lands are untapped for a long time. And you can cycle the Triomes later in the game if you were to flood out. So the mana base has actually been friendly to me. I have introduced the deck now. Are you prepared for the ultimate Gatewatch party? Are you prepared for the superest friends ever seen? Let's dive in. Let the Jank Week nonsense begin. All the tap lands, and of course the Planeswalkers. And somehow it's exactly as it's meant to be. What are these? Why is this full art? Is there something new about this update? Anyway, obligatory, this is mono red. So the historic update's out today. Look at these. It's just this little black thing down here. Maybe this is just how cards look now. I don't know. Are you not mono red? I'm confused. Those who cannot proceed beyond put thoughtfulness before action. What I'd give for Narset to find Interplanar Beacon right now. But I think the grab here is Kaya. You can minus it to exile one drops. I think that's a lot better than a Teferi. Uh oh. What are you gonna choose? I mean, very in the dark. They choose even. Protection from Vraska. That's annoying. I guess protection from Amori as well. I have just the trick for this. Um, alright. Probably just want to Teferi bounce that card then. It is a three mana play. Setting them back is good. We could also play our Umori, but then a removal spell is a tremendous setback. Should have named Odd, buddy. Might be a bad idea. Just kidding. Then Vraska would get him, but they don't know that. How's Bolas looking? Black, blue or red. Black, black, blue or red. We're on for Bolas. Mothra. Mothra must die. All right, I think Bolas blowing up Mothra is the easy peasy play. I will spare you. Bang. Your existence is pointless. It would be nice to try to get rid of the champion first, but we just haven't had the opportunity. But this turn, we might Liliana minus. Our opponent their deck is, here are my creatures that are pains in the butt. Conceivable. All right, Liliana, get them. The undead make great minions. Get out of my way. It's 
There's a lot more planies where that came from. Oh my goodness. First strike, whenever it attacks, other creatures get plus one, plus one. Okay. Let's make zombie. This, I... This looks like a fun new toy. I don't feel like I have to remove this right away. It's the first thing I think that we've seen where it's... Yeah, okay, that's fine. Hmm. But I'd like to play Narset this turn. I guess a backup Narset's fine. So, more Teferi. Ah, it, it's really good against this, whatever the heck this is. Venture returns. Big naming opportunity, odd or even. Last time you got Teferi'd, all right. Even and odd. Nope, double evens. No attacks. Mind. Rise. <laughs> now. Chandra sweeping the board isn't a good choice because of the venture. Can't be blocked by tokens. So Bolas can kill one of them. Maybe that's just where we want to be. Or we could play Sarkin and attack our opponent in the sky with two planeswalkers. And put them way behind. Hmm. I think we can play Sarkin and Kaya or and Teferi. Yeah. How about this? Red, red. Okay. So let's play Teferi. Let's bounce one of the Venturers. And let's play a Sarkin and get aggressive. Don't really want to trade away the Omori, just want to get in in the air. And now the opponent is under some pressure to deal with Sarkin or the one loyalty planeswalkers. Oh, hello. But these are human, right? It's not really a good card when you have all humans to attack with. I guess the only non human we've seen is this insect. And with that, they're dead. All right, on the draw with Kaya against Luris. Kaya's pretty good against Luris, and we have the mana caster with any other top decked land. Let's see what happens. All right, no one drop. Interesting. Another triome off the top is appreciated. But I really want some interplanar bacon. I need bacon. Bring me the bacon. Okay, something I can exile. Backup Kaya. Seems a <laughs> backup to the backup. Seems good. Emma A Femiya ya. How do we deal with that? I mean, Kaya's probably not going to have food in the graveyard because of that thing. Alright, are we going to miss land drop 4 in our 28 land deck on the draw? That is the question. I like a good fight. Notice I didn't say fair. Opponent should sacrifice the life's bounty. Even if the protection doesn't matter, having it in the graveyard is better than having it exiled because Ephemia can make a zombie. I can ex another Kaya can exile that zombie, but, you know, circle of life and all. She dead. 
No what? No exiting voice line for Kaya? Weird. Ghost form. We can exile that. It's a fun game with Kaya. I can exile that. I can exile that. Oh, they don't make a zombie. We drew more Kayas than lands. There's 25 lands in the deck. And there's one Kaya. And we draw the Kaya. Shuffler's fine. It doesn't in any way attract duplicate cards to each other. Don't worry, Wizards never said it did. That's just normal random behavior. Another Kaya bites the dust. It, will the opponent slam Luris? They probably should, right? I mean, they know I'm an all Planeswalker deck that's missing land drops. They should be aggressive. They are not. They are not aggressive. This time, I'm going to get rid of the bounty. This time. The plan might be for Luris to bring that back out of the graveyard, which is why the opponent isn't exiling it with Ephemia. Annoying. Untap land and we can Vraska that thing. Opponent's still trying to slow roll Luris. I don't have sweepers. I don't have lands. Like this is so, this is unbelievable. All right. I'm gonna make you well done. Exile that too. We'll just keep exiling stuff. If they play it too slow, Vraska comes down and starts setting them back. But they have slow played it so far. Graveyard's empty. Luris doesn't get anything. They're obviously really concerned with value for their Luris. Because they refuse to cast the darn thing. A tapped land. Awesome. Owie. But they're just not casting anything else, and now the land is flowing. All right. So the way that resolved, I don't think they have a Karmetra's Blessing. A workaround could be to kill one of the enchantments, but I don't think they have it. So we'll just take out the Ephemia. You want to be allies with that thing? I guess, you know... Legendary enchantment zombie harpy-ish thing. And a Gorgon. They could be friends. Could be best friends. They called the Death Dweller. <laughs> okay. Still not bringing out Luris. What are you waiting for? Oh, now we're making zombies. I see. I see how you is. Um, make a 4-4? Four, four? see. It's actually a difficult one. I could play Bolus and plus it with the Vraska plus to kill the Vraska and have a Bolus on 7. I don't, I, I don't like it. Don't dig it. It's actually a pretty tough choice. And how we play this is going to matter. I think the plan is to use Chandra to clean up the board. So I'm going to play Bolus and plus it. Trying to hit land drops. The no. The opponent can definitely attack and kill it. But they don't have enough going on to attack and kill both of these. No weakness I cannot exploit. And... And with Vr Vraska charged up, the opponent has to kill that or she removes something. So yeah, I like this. Sometimes your planeswalkers have to smoke screen. How will they play this turn?
They could play Luris and bring back Sentinel's Eyes, but I don't know if they know they have a Luris at this point. We did it! We cast Luris. I think if the opponent had been aggressive with this card earlier, we might have had a hard time coming back. But now that we have enough land and a sh like to play our six drop planeswalkers, I don't see it. I think we've got this. That almost hurts. All right, Bolus survives. I believe we play a Chandra first, sweep the board, and then plus the Bolus. And let's just push for the Bolus ultimate. We can give do a Chandra emblem with the plus on the Bolus and get it up to five loyalty. And the opponent sees the writing on the wall. They have been bested by the all planeswalker pile. Yep. Sweet. I mean, so Beacon's like our best card. I'll probably say that a few times. But if you have that, you kind of have to keep. Get our tap lands out of the way early. Feels good to go tap land into tap land with the deck. Sets you up for future success. Uh-oh. Are they going to be the type to counter our beautiful planeswalkers? Not yet. I like a good fight. Be gone. No one drops to exile either, but just something that sits on the battlefield, eventually attacks the opponent for four points in the face. Electromancer. Huh. Contentious plan. Proliferate and draw a card. Matchmaking algorithm has no idea what to do with my deck. I have noticed that. I get paired against all kinds of things. Let's get rid of the Electromancer and exile it from the graveyard to gain two life. This time. And now there's two Planeswalkers on the field. Another hand with three Sarkins. Honor the God Pharaoh, discard the card, draw two, a mass. All right, we missed the land drop, so there's really only one play this turn. We play the Umori, we name Planeswalker. We can plus the Vraska, but I don't want to sacrifice anything. And we will minus the Kaya to exile the token. Better watch your back from here on out. We could ignore the token, but I just don't feel good about that. If anything removes the collector, they get to attack one of our planeswalkers. A loyalty counter is an advantage of its own. Becomes very important as the game goes on. The difference between having a live planeswalker or a dead planeswalker often comes down to one loyalty. And this, basically this deck is all about making awkward board states because our opponent has to worry about the loyalty on the planeswalkers as an extension of our own life total. Untapped land off the top. Well, actually we don't need an untapped land. We just need Umori to be on the battlefield and we can Sarkin. This makes red, this makes red. And the pressure is really on. All right, our opponent's drawing more cards and making another 1-1. One, one. What you gotta do? Land off the top, not the one that we need. Doesn't really matter. Let's go, Sarkin. Let's start getting crazy. If the opponent now has some kind of a counter, good for them. Slow down the onslaught. Come. Demands power. Get you exiled again? Am I dematerializing? Huh. Huh. Maybe the opponent has a bounce spell and they're thinking about what to bounce. Unsummon Vraska. Sure. Well, 
It feels like their deck is trying to work towards some kind of combo. Now is the time for it. There's a lot of Planeswalkers coming after you. Opt. Okay. Up. Dig up the combo. Spellkeeper weird. Weird indeed. One for get an instant or sorcery back. Well, guess we Chandra that. Chandra is one of the bigger plays we can get here. Could have also taken it on with Frasca. Seems unnecessary though. Yep. I've got a burning desire to finish you. We'll send two cards to exile. We'll plus the Sarkin. The game isn't still quite over this turn. It will have to wait one more turn. Another unsummon. Okay. Down to six. Brawl, Storm Conduit. Our opponent is also a Planeswalker player. They're going to copy something. A Lava Coil into a Lava Coil, I suppose. They do get to deal damage to Planeswalkers with Rawl. They can kill the Chandra. Cards are in exile, though. I guess we can't quite go off with the Kaya yet, being at four loyalty. So, Umori exiled, Chandra dead, Raul's still on the field. The opponent isn't going away. We'll keep the pressure on. We'll attack the Kaya, take out the Raul, I guess there's no way to change what just happened. Then we'll exile the Rawl for, you know, spite reasons. Well done. Not what I expected. To see me That's why it's called a theory. Throw it back to you. Seventh land. Kefnet. And Aya Ultimate. Sometimes things come back to haunt me. Bang bang. Got Kaya, and it's got Sarkin. It sort of has a curve. I don't know why. I mean, I know my deck has a lot of fours. It seems like I'm always drawing double of everything in this in this deck. And let's do the Triome first, because this could be an untapped turn four land if we top deck another land, and we might draw another Triome. Okay, or not. What do we want? Mountain, I suppose? don't have a white source, but the ba the bacon is a very good white source, and I don't think we need double white for a single card in our deck, so bacon basically functions that way. Alright, we get another player playing the life's bounty, which is a good exile target. You won. This time. Why does it say... she sounds like she's being defeated, but we're doing the things. Weird. Freaking weird, you guys. See if the opponent has an answer for this. A very important card to us right now. Submit zero. Pack your bags and hit the road. A very important card to us right now because otherwise we're not gonna have something to cast next turn. <gasps> no. No. Not like that. All right, land untapped off the top. Oh, but you can't hit me again. That's a good draw, actually. It could have been a lot worse. Your life's about to end. Hope you're ready. <laughs> Frasca is lethal. Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, I guess I can't really mulligan the hand if I have three mana and four mana Planeswalkers. We're up against Yorian. Could be a tough opponent. We will see. The Scourge of Magic the Gathering. Ask anyone. All right. We'll go Triome into Triome. We'll try to draw an untapped land so we can play one of these on time. Ask for land, I get Sarkin. This is becoming a running theme of the show. All right, big draw step coming up. Got it. So what do we have? We don't have double blue. Is black and white. Okay, we can play Kaya then. Let the party begin. Of course it's Omen of the Sea. That's the only card you ever play when you're running Yorian. You have all of the omens. I'll be gone. I have this sinking feeling my planeswalkers might get stolen in this matchup. Hello. I can no longer stand by and watch. Blink your omen. Okay, that's a value play, but you have to discard now. So you better know exactly what you're blinking that omen for. A land. All right, I guess they're low on action. Do we need another blue? This produces blue or red. This produces black and black. I'm thinking like Bolas, but I can fetch another blue and be okay for Bolas. So rather than throw a Mori down, which is probably something the opponent's prepared to interact with, a Vraska could be very good. Just get rid of their Teferi. It doesn't particularly bother me, but it just keeps them from having anything going. We can also exile it in case of an Elspeth Conqueror's death right now. Also, Teferi plus into Shatter the Sky is one of the best things they can do against our Sarkon. So just taking away that option is good, too. Draw the black so we can play Bolas if we needed to. I still think we Passage for the Swamp. So we're not priced into playing this untapped. Might save us two life. Here's Sarkin. I don't think we need the Dragon. I think it just dies to Teferi. So let's just start hitting the opponent as hard as we can. Two cards in exile. Plus here, no sacrifice. Plus here, no target. You're not welcome here anymore. See how our opponent deals with that. Fires of invention. They just die if they don't get rid of a planeswalker here. You can plus the Sarkin and attack for 12. They have Elspeth Conquer's death. That will do. No. Another Sarkin would be nice. We don't get it, though. So what's the play? Don't have removal for this at this moment. I think we play Garrick, make the Wolves. Could also play the Narset and try to find another Sarkin. And that might be better. Feels like playing Garrick making wolves is going to play into the opponent's hands at least a little bit. If they steal it, it's so bad for us. Whereas if we are able to do the Sarkin thing and they go Luka and Yorian and things like that, they might not be able to steal everything. Uh, they'll be in really good shape if they do that anyway, but it's worth a try. No Sarkin. We've got to ferry. That's good. Sorry, I'm late. Bounce the fires. That at least sets them back, makes their turn harder. There's a Sarkin. We, I was going to sacrifice the Teferi. Now I don't want to. I definitely don't want to sacrifice the land, though. Because... 
Hmm. I'm going to be taxed, so I need one more land. Maybe I minus this here just to get two points in. Having it on one and having it on five doesn't really matter. Your loss is my gain. I sacrifice a Planeswalker here to tr give myself another chance at drawing the land off the top to win with the Sarkin. I think the opponent's going to flicker the Elspeth Conqueror's death next turn. So they'll have the Yorian and they'll have another creature. So, yeah. The only way it's going to work if they flick, if they get rid of these. I think I just plus. And I don't think I sacrifice. I need all the Planeswalkers to try to get there. Fires returns. Dorian. Yep. That's the play. What do they exile? Probably Vraska? The most loyalty, anyway. Maybe it's better to get rid of Narset. I'm not sure. They're not going to draw a card unless they exile the Narset, because the Omen shut down by the Narset. Let's see if they spot that. And we need an untapped land for a Sarkin here because of frickin' Elspeth Conquer's death. Deck isn't exactly packed with untapped land. It has a lot of land, but a lot of them are tapped. That's an untapped land. If I can't remove the Orion, I can get the opponent to two. What if I just play Garrick and kill the Urian? Then what? Not much else, quite frankly. All right, let's see what we find here. Chandra. Chandra's plus can really help. All right, God, what do we do? You have to assume a lot of our planeswalkers are likely to get stolen. So I think it's better, rather than playing the Sarkin or the Chandra, I think it's best to do something to remove the Urian. Guess I just don't have that option though. All right. All right, I just have to be aggressive and hope the opponent can't kill me and that Chandra emblem will get me the rest of the way. There's no other way, I don't think. We begin. That's more like it. You want something banished? Funny, that's what I do. Are you ready? Get the opponent to two. Play the Awakened Inferno with a top deck to land, because this Elspeth Conqueror's death is going to tick again. And hope that whatever happens from here, if they start blinking agents of treachery and doing all kinds of stuff, maybe a Chandra Emblem can finish the job. Our set. Okay. And a B. Another Elspeth Conquer's death. Well, we knew they could probably take the Sarkin out. Now they definitely can. A dragon would rather die than lose. Act the Kaya. Land off the top again? Not this time. Not this time. Alright. If we take out the Narset, the opponent just gets it back, so that's not a good play. So, Vraska doesn't really do anything. We play this, we can't also play something else, and I'm sure it just dies. So I'm going with other Narset. Bolas? The problem is Bolas doesn't do much either. Not the way that things are going. I think I better just take the cheaper Planeswalker. The cheaper effect. 
The endless string of the second Elspeth Conqueror's death is probably more obnoxious than almost anything else about this deck, quite frankly. And if the opponent steals a land, this game is over. Kept on top. Can't be too bad. They want it in their hand. That's a weird whiff. When you keep on top and then whiff with the Narset, that's not good. They call me because they fear my take the land. Let's take the Narset. Mind. Always tap the land, make sure they get a tap land. They can't use it this turn. Whatever evil intention they may have. I hate you, Birth of Melitus. I hate you so much. It's really Elspeth Conqueror's death I have the beef with. Land. I don't think there's anything I can do about anything. I can't Vraska, the Luca, or the Agent because of their high casting cost. Harry doesn't bouncing anything is really bad for me. So I guess it's Umori. Sylvantris, scry two. Both to the top. Well, they've proved they're bad at scrying <laughs> earlier mistakes. Maybe this isn't so bad. Elspeth Conqueror's death has finally expired. The opponent can turn this into another agent, of course, unless all the agents are in their hand, in which case they can play two agents anyway. They have to ferry, they can okay. Yep, there you go. Another land bites the dust. We're gonna need an untapped red off the top now. They can see the Chandra, that's part of the problem with all this. It's a very face up thing. They'll have a mountain somewhere in the deck. They take the last red mount, and then there's no way I can play the Chandra next turn. But that's not what they target. They're giving me a chance. I have to top deck a red source, though, which I'm sure I can't quite do. And then after that, they have to not kill me and not gain life for two turns. And actually, this puts them to four. Okay. I think it's time to throw in the towel. The amount of time that it's obviously going to take them to figure out exactly how to play this perfectly is not worth it. I got robbed. I had everything stolen from me. Now I'm going to try to recover. Maybe this hand will help. Maybe this can be fun. Maybe I can be reminded that magic is fun after that absolutely miserable experience. Hmm. White mana, they could have done something, they did nothing. No idea what that means. Paradise Druid is here. Right. Which three drop to play? Let's go for the Narset. They might have Season of Growth shenanigans they want to do. Oh yeah. Let's uh, grab the big Garrick. Grab the big guy. 
I can take out that hawk. Yes. Yes. You have to watch out. When the hawk is lit, they get very legit. Paradise Druid enters the combat step to keep Narset on her toes. Or does she? Whoa! That is aggressive. Our opponent has chosen their line. They're going for my face. The problem with that is we gain a lot of life. <laughs> Nothing phases me. Go away. Dematerializing? Again, she's talking like she's losing. What are these voice lines, Kaya? Why so grumpy? Why so sad? He died. And now she has no voice line. <laughs> the heck is this? All right. Do we take out that druid? I think we do. The opponent low on threats, low on creatures here. Probably some kind of an aura enhanced deck, but choosing not to do it so far. Raska next turn, if she survives, can plus to get rid of the Narset that's otherwise not doing much, other than waiting for Sarkhan to animate her. That might be a while. Plus, there's plenty of other Planeswalkers willing to do that job. You can play a Kaya or an Umori this turn. Probably an Umori is better. Okay. Now what? I think we can play a Bolus. Mm-hmm. Bolus strong. We'll just push for ultimate. We'll just try to get right to the win con. Just plus two, plus two win. All right. Conclave Tribunal says not right now. My schemes have been foiled. <laughs> My schemes have indeed been foiled. That is accurate. All right. Well, if you're going to foil that scheme, I got a new one. It's a new Planeswalker Ultimate. We are the apex Let's pitch one of these wolves. Puts our Garrick up to six. Next turn, we might be able to get that plus three, plus three ultimate. Rosemain Centaur. Well, I don't think that will hold us back. Let's go like this. Olus. Make two wolves. Plus the Vraska. Pitch a wolf. And what this does is lets us keep our Garrick after doing the minus six by taking this line. Now this is a hunting party. No attacks. Let's defend our Planeswalker army. A hunting party indeed. Oh yeah. Eric is on it. But just wait till Sarkin shows you what the band can really do. Assemble. Alright. We got some night tokens. I don't know if it's right. I don't know if it's lethal. But I know I'm doing it. Math is for the blockers, of course. Uh, get rid of one of those. This time. Let's make a few more of those. You're not scared. Let's destroy one of these. It's not often I'm out Let's shoot there. down this guy. For your Let's call. plus the Sarkin. Let's smash. Okay, a bit of overkill. They were dead in the air. 21 freaking damage. <laughs> Uh, I feel bad. I'm a bully. If you feel I'm a bully, let me know in comments. 
Hmm. Slow triple sarkin. Got him. Magic is easy. Sometimes you win by being on the play. Sometimes you just freaking win. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. I'm not even cutting it. I want you all to see. See what I deal with. Eee. This hand needs another blue. If we have another blue, it's great. If we don't, I guess we're going Vraska Bolas, which that's not terrible. So it's fine. Well, now we have a now we have a three drop without the Narset, so Kai is ready. The birth. Oh God, what are we up against? If th if this is secretly the uh, secretly that deck, you know the one. So I should have played. I guess I. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should have played Beacon last turn in case I drew a blue source. I don't know. Definitely should have played Beacon this turn if I wasn't going to play the Narset, so that was a mistake. But now Kai is on the board. Kai can deal with the token. Maybe that matters. I don't know. We will see. Are you a life gain deck? What? A weapon? Not hexproof. Okay. Trample. Huh. Smash this, smash that. I'm guessing our opponent's some kind of a life gain deck that also runs Mecha Godzilla. We've got double planeswalkers on the field. Got the edge, Heliod. I have no way in my deck to remove Heliod. We just have to keep it off devotion. Actual nothing I can do. So let's push for that Bolus ultimate that we didn't get in the last game. We use a plus two. You are all so generous. I'll be back. There's some exile. There's another plus two, but don't sacrifice anything. We'll see if the opponent can remove the bolus. They have Banishing Light. If they take out the bolus, Vraska gets it back. But then we can't do the plus two, I suppose. Pride Mate. A little bit of pressure. How do we deal with the Pride Mate? I actually think we just attack down our opponent and use the Vraska to kill the Pride Mate. So, smash. Then, minus three, get that thing dead. Braska will die later. Just give her a minute. She doesn't realize she's dead already. She has no loyalty, but she still has power and toughness. And, oh, end of turn. Now she gone. Now she gone. We have three cards in exile, so this does three damage. Still a ways to go. I know, I could have had Bolas back. I think it's better to apply pressure. Make the opponent figure out how to deal with things. It's also slightly more likely they'll continue to play magic than if we just ground out small, slow, incidental advantage. We would need another blue source besides the beacon to be able to Amori into Narset because this creates two mana of different colors. So we need an untapped blue Want to Amori into a Narset. Uh-oh. Are we getting the rope for our evil pride mate killing ways? Life gain deck angry? Poke them. No, poke a little. Maybe a little rage will encourage them to play a little more magic. Who knows? Maybe this play is a particularly hard one to figure out. That is also possible. Right, they are here, and it is Mecha Godzilla. All right, game on. And hard cast the giant killer. 
lifelink. That's probably exactly what they wanted. That's a mean draw, though. That is a very mean draw. Slam it! Check out these fireworks. I summon you. Down to six, three cards in exile, so we'll keep plussing. I hope you said, Am I? You better watch your back from here on out. Oh, and it wraps it up. And we are back for the wrap here at the end. The deck certainly did what was advertised, just spamming a bunch of Planeswalkers. Some decks could keep up with it, many could not. Some interesting games. Maker really doesn't know what to do with this. I feel a little bad for the intro packs that have to go up against this and basically face an absolute army of mythics. But at the same time, when I get paired against good meta decks, it's usually not too hard for them to pick me apart, particularly Jeskai Luka. What a heartbreaking pain in the butt that deck can be. So uh, it is, the deck does feel a little repetitive after a while. It's good for a laugh. Um, if you want to customize it and do your own Oops All Planeswalker builds, by all means, go for it. Let me know how it goes. I would love to hear about it. If I were to build the deck again, I would build, I would try to make the mana base work for Nicole Bolas and Nissa Who Shakes the World. I think with the Triomes being forests, and cards like Overgrown Tomb. I, I think there's enough so that we could play Nyssa as well. And Nyssa is so powerful that I would want a team of like Sarkin, Nyssa, and Bolas. And possibly replacing Garrick and some of the six mana cards and maybe the Kayas. But overall, there's not that much room for customization in here. If you want to do it really crazy, just throw in one of, throw in all the Planeswalkers you own. Make it a deck, throw in Umori, throw in 28 land, and away you go. Knock yourself out, have a good time. So, I mean, again, with these Jank Week wraps, it's not about optimizing the deck, it's about having fun. So, if you have a suggestion, you can leave it in the comments, you can tell other people what you are playing, and by all means, go for it. Don't, you don't need my, you don't need my approval on it, do your thing. Also, where are we at in Jank Week? I think this is number four. Four, so we have three to go, but we're also on the march to 69,000 subscribers. So please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And when we get to 69,000, it will be another week of jank. So, uh, and another shout out to my patrons who get to vote on what decks we play. So if you want to join the Patreon, it's only $1.99 a month. Also, this will be the last reminder I'm going to leave this month to the Cool Kids Club. If you subscribed with Twitch Prime during the Ikoria release event last month, now is a good time to go over to Twitch and resubscribe with Twitch Prime. It doesn't renew automatically, it's free to you, and it really helps me. So if you want to take a minute to do that, it's much appreciated. And a big thank you to everybody who already did. You guys are amazing. I never dreamed my Patreon or that my or my Twitch Prime subs could do this well. Um just, I, I'm kind of blown away, and I'm glad you're enjoying the content. Speaking of the content, go over to the CGB Gaming channel, my second channel, link in the description. Check out the new Historic Anthology 3 video, where I give you a crafting guide of how to and what to craft from Historic Anthology 3 if you want some sweet new cards for your historic collection. If that interests you, check it out. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.